back here at the Firearms Museum. Phil, you never know what's going to happen around here. We had a kid almost put his head through a, a display case. He got so into the museum here, not nearly knocked us out of our seats. But so we are here at the museum while it's open, doing a couple of curators' corners. But it's fun, isn't it? We have an enthusiastic visitors. We love it. It's a great day here at the Farms Museum. Great day to sneak in and look at some of the treasures here for you folks on Sportsman Channel. So I grab Phil and Phil. What do you got there? Well, John, uh, I don't know if you, if you or the visitors from last week recognize this is still the uh, the Colt Cobra. Oh, the I aluminum, I knew that gun. the aluminum bodied uh, detective special, right. you know, in aluminum. Uh, you know, for everybody that wants to go lighter. There's somebody that wants to go the other way. Of course. And so we brought this out to show you the opposite, which is what we call the Fitz Special. Wow. <laughs> now, this is a very, very special <laughs> gun. Uh, very rare um, and uh, very much larger. And I was going to say very <laughs> large. I, from, from my perspective, that is a big gun across the it oh is a big gun gracious um, so tell us about that well this is a uh, a, a custom job uh to a degree uh, colt actually made about 20 of these uh, which is one of the smallest runs that they've ever done it's it can it falls under the classification of a uh, of custom shop work yeah um but uh, colt's best salesman uh one of its most colorful characters in its sales force from 1910 until 1941, was a uh, former police officer, shooting instructor uh, named John Henry Fitzgerald. And uh, these are called Fitz Specials after Fitzgerald because he was the one that kind of designed them. Uh, he was able to get Colt to uh, make a number of them uh, from the factory. And then he did his own, considered a, an excellent gunsmith himself, would perform uh, gunsmithing uh, repairs right on the line at Camp Perry during the summer. Wow. Uh, and he made up a number of fit specials himself. That's cool. As, uh, as former law enforcement, he really liked the, uh, the round butt styling of the detective okay. special. Uh, but he liked this big frame of the new service. Uh, this is in uh, 45 Colt. It started life out as a, originally as a model uh, 1909 Army revolver, mm -hmm. uh, but it's had a number of alterations made to it. I can see that. <laughs> First off, the <laughs> barrel's been shortened to two inches. Um, the barrel's been shortened to two inches. Um, the hammer's been bobbed. It looks like there's I, no no yes. way to cock. This is double action only. Uh, the front of the trigger is gone. Trigger guard is missing. Notice that. Uh, so that you can just get your finger in there without having to worry about. Well, when you got that big hand to grab that thing, you know what that trigger guard you get in your way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, it this is in 45. The uh, the ejector rod has no uh, knob or knurl to it. It's just a straight straight rod. Uh, there were 20 of these that uh, Fitz did in both uh, 38 and 45 mm -hmm. uh, that he had done at the Colt factory. Um, if you get one that actually letters from Colt, uh, it's worth an incredible amount of money. Wow. Um, but then Fitz did about 20 or 40 himself, and we don't know which ones those were. Uh, so there's, you know, very hard to establish provenance. Yes. This is not an original Fitz, I'm sad to say. But whoever did this kept the best elements of what he had in mind when they did this, and they did an excellent, yes, unbelievable job. It's a beautiful of uh, of converting this to a uh, a fit special. I, I can just imagine in '45 what that thing is like to fire. I I haven't found out yet. I was going to uh, say, if I'm home long enough in the next three months, I'll uh, actually get to go to the range. Well, the good thing is this is not original. You can actually probably I guess take that one out and fire. I right? would feel no regrets. Yeah, that'd be neat. That's a lot of fun. It's like a it's like a fine car, Phil. They're great to look at, a, co a beautiful car, but they're made to be driven. It'd be nice to Absolutely. for you to fire the thing and let us know. Uh, you know, let us know when you're going to do it. Maybe we'll sneak out there with the camera and follow you out there too. So that'd be great. That is awesome. And I take that's on that's on display here. Uh, not not yet, but it's working its way towards uh, towards exhibition. There you go. There that's we what go. we call a pre-sale, my friend. <laughs> so you just see that you need to get here to the museum at some time, or also 
check out check us out online tell folks how they can do that phil you can uh, visit us personally by coming uh, down interstate 66 in fairfax county virginia to the nra headquarters which is right at the intersection of us route 50. we're open seven days a week free admission and plenty of free parking as well now, if you can't make it to the uh off the interstate visit us on the internet we're there 24 hours a day seven days a week at nramuseum.com. And, and if you do come in here, it's fine. If we're, if we're doing these things, we'd love to have you here. But please don't knock your head through the display case because it really practically took two years off of Phil and I's life, and we can't <laughs> afford that. So. <laughs> so, thank you, John. Thank you so much for another great installment here at the NRA Firearms Museum of the Curator's Corner.